Okay, everybody, this is the tutorial to do the socket head cap screw. This is a special screw with a spherical radius on the tip. So it's, it's really a set type screw, but it has a socket head cap on it. So the documentation doesn't give you a whole lot of dimensions, but it does give you the specifications. It is a 0.250, which is quarter inch by 20 threads per inch, uh, unified national course, 2A, so standard tolerance, and a length which would be underneath the base of the head is 0.285, and that's the length of the thread itself. Okay, so for this project um, we're going to need a couple pieces of information from both our charts. So we're going to need our cap and set screws and we're going to need to scroll down and all the cap geometry will come from this chart for a quarter twenty screw. It's a UNC thread and so we're going to be using the quarter inch twenty line uh, shown here on this chart. Okay, so I've got you want to have those ready and handy. Um, we're going to start with the cap end and then we'll build up from there. Okay, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to um, draw in a... We're going to start out in World Coordinate Systems and we're going to go to... Let me go to a front view and we're going to start with the left side and as I typically do I'm going to draw a line with ortho and the snaps on to the right and then repeat that going up. Alright so I'm going to start offsetting from the left and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better so the first thing I want is to offset this distance H. So we're going to go down to the line for a quarter twenty. Okay, so it was a quarter inch. And we're going to look for dimension H, which is the head height. So quarter twenty head height needs to be somewhere between 0.25 and 0.244. So for argument surf purposes, let's just put it at 0.25. So we're going to take our offset. Point two five. And we have the height of our head. Looks like our line scales off. Now let's go back to our chart and let's get the head uh, diameter so we can offset for that. So again we're doing a section that we're going to revolve. So go back to our chart and for the quarter 20 the head diameter is between 0.375 and 0.365 minimum maximum. We could shoot for the middle. I'm going to go for maximum material condition. Okay, so half of 0.375 is 0.875. So that's where I'm going to put it in. 0.1875. And offset our center line outwards. Okay, so then we can trim off this extra long line here. That gives us most of the head. Okay, so the chamfer, uh, according to the spec, be anywhere between 30 to 45 from this angle here. And it doesn't really specify a size. So they leave that up to the manufacturer. So the note said to we're going to make it a 45 degree chamfer 
we're going to type a, a distance of 0.03 and 0.03 if they're both the same it's a 45 degree chamfer and that'll put our chamfer on the edge okay the next part is somewhat ambiguous we have a issue here um, the drawing doesn't say whether the length 0.285 plus or minus 5 is the overall length of this fastener or the length of the thread now holding a thread to plus or minus 5 would be somewhat unusual we're going to error for what will make the longer fastener because the function of this piece we want to probably rather have it longer than too short so we're going to use that uh, 0.285 dimension is the length of the thread and then add the spherical radius 100,000 spherical radius on the end all right so our major diameter is a quarter of an inch because that's our nominal thread size so we're going to do half of that with an offset of 0.125 offsetting off center line to the outside we'll then trim off our piece and then we're going to do an offset of our 0.285 for the length of the fastener goes to there and we can trim this guy off now our spherical radius falls in between here it's a hundred thousandths but it's tangency point is at the minor diameter so we're going to need to put in our minor diameter so let's go to our uh, screw chart and we're going to look at our quarter 20 has a has an exterior thread minor diameter of 0 0.9 1905 so 0.1905 so we need to take that number and divide it in half which gives us 0.9525 so we're going to do an offset of that so we should have the major diameter and the minor diameter now to place our circle correctly Basic, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offset the same distance down below because I want to trim back my circle. So we're going to do a circle. Okay, we're going to use a creative uh, descriptive geometry way to place the spherical radius. So we want a spherical radius of a hundred thousandths, but it terminates at the base of the thread. So if we take and draw a circle that's where that um, thread terminates and we make that a radius of 0.1 and then we draw a second circle at the other one, the same diameter, where they intersect, their intersect point is where the center of our spherical radius should lie and there you go so it terminates at each one of the lines there all right it's not tangent so this sphere ends at the base of our thread radius 
All right, so now we can delete these two circles on the other side that were for, used for construction. And uh, trim away those lines. And we'll trim up our spherical radius. So it looks should look look like that. Almost looks like a steam engine in profile. Okay, I'm gonna throw this line on the construction layer um, because uh, we want to use it later. That's our minor diameter. So we'll go to construction, and then that way that can separate that off. I'm gonna temporarily make the construction layer invisible. So I can select this whole entire assembly and type join and that will turn it all into one entity as you see here. Okay and so let's look at this in isometric mode or home view. So now we're going to do a revolve. So we're going to go pull down arrow on extrude. We're going to select revolve. It asks us what we want to result revolve. We'll pick our profile. We'll accept that profile. And we're going to spin this around what's currently the x-axis. So let's type x. And it's asking how many degrees we want to go. We want to go 360. And we should result in a bolt that looks like this. Now, I want to put the hex in the head, and then we will do the thread. All right, so we're going to look at the face of the part, and right now we're in front view. I want to change to the, it's, it's actually the left side view, and that's what we're going to draw our hex on. So we need to go back to our specification. And we're going to scroll down until we get to our socket head cap screws. And we're looking for J. So the nominal J hex size for a quarter inch thread is somewhere between 3 sixteenths. So it's actually uh, 188 thousandths. Now we're not going to go to the extent to model the very bottom of the hex, which should have a drill point in it. We're not going to worry about that, not for drawing purposes. If we were actually making the bolt instead of buying it, we could do that. But um, we're going to do 118 thousandths hex on the face. Okay, so we're going to go to our polygon tool. And it's asking for the number of sides, it's going to be six. And we're going to specify the center. And make sure our, our snaps do say center. And it's not picking up on it because I, I guess it's on origin. So let's see if we can get the origin. That's fun. Okay, it's saying, do we want a inscribed circle or circumscribed circle? And it defaults to inscribed, and I believe that's what we want. And the radius of that circle, so it's uh, 0.188 across the flats. So we want half of that. which is 0 0.094, 0 0.094. And that should give us the proper size hex for the end of our bolt. Now let's go back to our chart and what is the depth of it? 
it's dimension T, so it's uh, an engagement. That's what they're calling it. And so it is a, an engagement of 0.12. So that's how deep we need to go. And we're going to try to use a press pull. And probably turn off the grid. It's giving me a hassle. A press pull. And negative 0 0.094. And we get a uh, nice socket, hex socket. Actually, next we're going to put the uh, chamfer on the edge here. So we're going to go the same as our other chamfer on our other threads. So we're going to go to solid. We're going to do a chamfer edge. And we're going to select the edge of our part and we're going to do a distance 0.02 and 0.02. Okay, so that's actually a pretty healthy uh, chamfer for a screw head. Okay, at this point, so we're, going to, we're going to do a chamfered edge. We're going to select our edge. We're going to do a distance of 0.01 by 0 0.01, so it's a 45 degree chamfer, 10,000 sedge break, and it gives us a little uh, lead in for our thread. Now we're going to go back to wireframe, and we're going to go back home, and we're going to make our construction layer visible again. And I've actually changed the current layer to construction. Okay, so now we're going to draw our thread profile on our minor diameter and cut our thread. So, of course, there's a variety of ways to approach this. Um, but I'm going to start by drawing a line from the endpoint up, straight up with ortho on. And then I'm going to offset our construction line by the um, difference between the major and minor diameter radius. So we have a 0.25 nominal size major diameter, major diameter minus the minor diameter, which is 0 0.25. Which gives us a difference in the diameters of 0.0595, we divide that by 2, and we get a figure that's 0.02975, and that figure is what we're going to offset the cyan line to get back to our major diameter as a construction line. So we're going to type in 0.02975. And we'll offset our cyan line. And that gives us our edge we not lopped off with our chamfer. And then I am going to go and trim this line, vertical line, off. We're going to make the thread pitch box. So from one thread pitch to the other thread pitch, this is a 20 inch thread. So if we are to take one and divide it by 20, it's 0.05 is our offset. So let's offset that 50 thousandths. And that represents the distance from crest to crest in our thread pitch. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate the line segment for this wall. Select it, hit enter. Our rotation points going to be the top corner. I'm going to turn ortho off. And we're going to go 30 degrees. Now I'm going to use the extend command to extend both the top and bottom lines to make a box shape. Okay, so now let's extend our angled line. 
and we're going to set our thread pitch which goes from center of a theoretical sharp on either end um, so we're going to make a mirror of the angle line we have here so I'm going to go straight up and use ortho on in this case and we're creating a mirror line so we'll go down to the modify mirror command select the piece we want to mirror we're going to accept the piece we're going to mirror we're going to tell it that our mirror line starts here and ends here which gives us a v-shape okay so we have our, our v-shape the problem is is half of this flat is actually supposed to be down here at the bottom I'm going to delete this construction geometry and we're going to use a little trimming function here and if we are to then move the right hand line from end point to midpoint we've now split the difference of the flat between the one crest and the other and that will then allow us to extend the remnant and then we can uh, trim up the rest so we're going to trim this piece off, this piece off, that one. And we don't need that line anymore. Alright, so this is the profile of our thread that we're going to use as our profile on our um, helix. So the last step is to take and type the join command and we're going to join those pieces into one. Okay, so now if I select it, it should be all one piece. The next step is to create the helix. So if we go to draw, we can select the helix command. Looks like a coil. And it's asking you the center of the base. So we don't want the center of the sphere. We want the center of this front radius. So that would be the farthest one out. And we need to be in the right side view. So I'm going to do that over. I'm going to go draw helix. We're going to go to the, the furthest out center point, which should be in the same plane as the end of the part. Now it's asking us for a radius for one end. And we're going to select where we want it to connect with our profile. And now it's asking to specify the radius or diameter of the opposite end of the coil and so the radius is, is an eighth of an inch, 0.125. So you can either type in 0.125 or you can type diameter and type in a quarter inch. All right, so now we've got our coil. That's the correct diameter. It is turning counterclockwise. So we're going to make a reverse thread if we use this. So we're going to type the W command for twist and we're going to type CW for clockwise which reverses the helix. It defaults to counterclockwise because that's positive radians in math. Now to threat set the spacing between our helix we want that to match our thread pitch. So we're going to go to uh, turn height which is the letter H and that is going to be 0.05 which was our thread pitch now it's asking where is our uh, coil going to end and it's going to end at the center of the bottom of the head 
There we go. So we now have the profile and the path to develop our thread screw. We will be using this to make a coil shaped body to subtract from the screw. All right. So we're going to go to sweep. It's asking us um, what mode we want to be in or what the profile is. So we have a closed profile. It should default to solid. And then we need to set some parameters here. Um, we're going to select A for alignment. And no, it's not 90 degrees to the plane of the coil. Now we should be able to select the path provided your endpoint is aligned. If not, you need to select base point and align it. We select our helix. And we should have our solid. I think it's good. It is a coarse thread. At this point, we would then, if we've done everything right, we should do a solid subtract, select the bolt, the screw, I'm sorry, and then accept it, and then we select the coil that we're removing, and hit enter, and we should be left with a thread screw. And if I go to conceptual, it should look something like this. Blown up like this, it looks pretty monster, but all right. So you got your hex, and the spec says the head itself can be either knurled or not, it's uh, optional. All right, that concludes the tutorial for the socket head cap screw.